Hey guys, welcome back to the shop once again. SNS 142. So I've got a lot of content to share with you this week. We got a lot of stuff to go over. I've got a couple announcements to make. We've got some viewer mail. We've got new tools. We've got updates on our ZT grinder racks over there that I want to go over. And we've, we've got some machine work to share this week also. So a lot, a lot of stuff there. So I want to go ahead and, and start off by giving a, another plug on the T-Blaster campaign that's currently going on. It's for the A-Bomb 79 graphic tee and also the hoodie. I've got the links in the description box down below that you can click on, take you straight to it. There's going to be about another week by the time you see this for the campaign to run. It is like this shirt right here, like the Shop Life. It's a graphic tee with the graphics on the front. Hoodie's the same way. It's printed on the front of the hoodie. And they're available small to 5X. And I, I really dig the new shirts. This is a Hanes Beefy Tee. So that's what the shirt will be. And the, the hoodie is a Gildan brand of hoodie. So go check that out. And thank you everybody that's been giving me your support. We've had a few sales this past week. And it's looking good. All right. So there's a couple other things that I'd like to mention before we kind of go into our other content for the week. And one is I'm going to be, it's just about that time to go to Moultrie, Georgia. If you follow my channel, you know, I made a video last year, road trip to Moultrie. So check that out if you, if you'd like. So we're going to do the same trip again. I'm going over to see my cousin, Alex, uh, Alex's garage. And we're going to take a ride up to Moultrie to check out the swap meet. Last year I ran into Keith Rucker and Dale Derry and we had a good time up there and found some nice tools. So I'm looking forward to it again. That's gonna be next weekend. That's where I'll be is up there up there in Georgia and I plan on taking my camera and maybe we got some maybe we'll get some new footage for the road trip down there and uh, hanging out with Alex. Maybe we'll go do another burnout or something. You never know. So hope to share some footage with you of that. And there's another video out there that I would like to just kind of let you know about with uh, my company, you know, where I work, Motion. They just released a new video last year about, I'm, I'm sorry, not last year, last week. They just released a new video kind of highlighting the fluid power, uh, the, the fluid power services of our company there and the different shops. There, there's a couple shops that they really highlight. One of them is ours and then the other one up in Birmingham and we've got some of our sales guys in it. They did some interviews. I'm in one of the interviews. So it's a pretty interesting video, just kind of goes over the services that we provide, the company that I work for, and what our shops can do. So I'm gonna have a card up here for that video. You can click on, I'll also put it in the video description down below, you click on. If you're interested, go check that out. It's about nine, nine and a half minutes long. Pretty cool video to check out. So, all right. We're gonna go ahead, I got some new tools and viewer mail that I wanna show show you. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So we got us a new camera in the shop here. This is a, a Sony A6000 camera and a, another lens for it there too. The, uh, the, the F1.08 lens. So I've said this before, I got some awesome viewers out there and I have some extremely generous people who want to donate to this shop and help me around here and offer me up stuff like this. And that's exactly what's happened here. Is I have a viewer, his name is Bob Bishop, and he's from Reading, Pennsylvania. And whenever I made the video about the carbide inserts not long ago and I was talking to you guys about getting in and getting a tight shot, I use GoPro, so it's hard for me to do that. He sent me an email and told me that he had this camera right here and the lens, the extra lens that, that he bought separate. Uh, he's a, he enjoys photography. He's been a photographer for a long time. But he says that he had this camera, he bought it two years ago, and it just wasn't for him. He didn't care for it. He barely used it. And he was actually planning on eBaying it and selling it. And he enjoys the videos. And he sent me an email and said, I would love for you to have this camera if you want it and maybe it'll help you out with your video productions. So he sent it down this way. And let me tell you, that is a heck of a gift right there. And I plan on putting this thing to use around here. I've actually already put it to use. 
in my last video shop talk you, uh, talking about the CNMG inserts. I've got some stills in there of the tools. Those were taken with this camera right here. So I've been playing around with it for the past few days. We, we just got it a couple days ago. And I've already, the day that I got it, I went down there to the store and I had to pick up an SD card for it. So I bought a 64 gig Ultra Pro something something with a 90, I think it was like a 95, uh, the 95 speed, I can't remember what you call it now, but it was the high-end card. I got one of those for it and I bought this Sony case to keep the camera in. And here it is. That's the Sony a6000 and it's, uh, it's got the, the extra lens attached to it right now and I've been using that for photography and uh, learning, just testing the waters and learning how to take good pictures and setting your uh, aperture settings on the camera that has to do with the, uh, you know, the focal point of what you're trying to focus on in a, in a picture and in the background looking fuzzy and out of focus. I really like that kind of photography. I think it takes beautiful pictures and that's what I've been doing with this camera. I've taken it to work and I've been getting a few pictures down there. Uh, to, to share with marketing there to help them out a little bit but I want to put this to use around here to start getting better pictures and hopefully better video to go along with the video that I already take with the GoPro cameras I'm not planning on this being a replacement to what I use because the GoPros they work really well for my needs I like the mounts that I've got set up with the Noga arm the microphone and it's protected from the elements, you know, coolant splashing up on it and that kind of stuff. But I'm really looking forward to learning how to use this and learning how to take good pictures doing photography. So it did come with the, the stock lens right here. I got that in the bag. That one's, I believe that was for, uh, what was the range on this thing? I want to say 200 millimeter. I don't, oh yeah. No, it's not on there, so. I don't remember now. I guess I should have wrote it down. But anyway, this is the stock lens. You can do some zooming on that. This lens right here is the, uh, so, you know, it's auto zoom and auto focus. But it, it takes really, really nice pictures. While I was down there at the store, I went ahead and picked up an extra battery for it also. This uh, company right here, Refuel, that's what they had there. And I got the spare battery here in the side. So I would have an extra battery whenever I start using this, whenever the battery goes dead. So that is the new camera and I was just showing the new, the new little setups right here. You know, got the, got the case there to protect it. And you'll start seeing some new photography for the video productions taken with this Sony camera right here. So Bob, this is a, this is a really generous gift and I just can't thank you enough. You know, this really means a lot to me and this is, this is really going to help out around here. And I hope that you and everybody else that's watching gets to continue to enjoy the, the constant improvements that I try to do with the channel here, with the, the video, the audio, the pictures, and all that kind of stuff, you know? So I had one other thing I was going to show you. I got it right here. This is one little mount that I kind of threw together real quick. I think it was yesterday. And this is a Starrett mag base that I've had. And this is made by Noga and this is a hold it arm and the hold it arm is their line of articulating arms made for electronic devices cameras camera gear lighting any kind of thing that has to do with video productions they have different mounts that go on the end that is interchangeable with all of the current stuff out there in industry where you mount stuff up this right here the way it comes is a quarter 20 thread which will screw into the bottom of any camera any camcorder or anything like that and it works exactly the same as any of your other Noga arms it's just a nice articulating arm it's got the little handle that you can position where you want it and tighten it up and the thread is a quarter 20 thread on the bottom which also fits this mag base right here so that worked out pretty good so I haven't really used it yet on this I did set it up but I don't know I was just showing you what I've, what I've worked on there and hopefully that will come in handy around here for 
whenever we're doing our work and I want to take some video there on the machine. I've also got this tripod that my friend Gil, he gave this to me, I believe last year, it's, it's been a while now, he gave me this tripod, it was one that he had, and I had it put up in the house, I never really used it, I just pulled it out whenever I got the camera. So I've got a tripod here that I'll be able to use and put to use to for the, the pictures and the video and that kind of stuff. So Gil, if you're watching, we're finally going to put your tripod to use, man. <laughs> so. Once again, Bob, thank you very much. Very generous gift. It's awesome, man. I don't know what to I don't know what to tell you other than thank you very much. So this is a nice tool score from this week and and funny thing is is that I did not score this myself. I didn't get it at the flea market. My buddy TJ that I, that I see out there, he found this at a pawn shop here this past weekend. I believe it was Saturday and called me and told me what it was. He's like, "Man, you want this thing?" We got a nice gauge block set there, and this is made by Shear. So I'm assuming, I guess that says Geo Shear Company, New York. Maybe this was made before Shear took over a tubular mic company because the Shear that I know, any of the tools will say Shear Tomiko on it. So I don't know, I'm not big into the gauge block stuff. So maybe some of you guys might know the, the history of this right here, but it is a very nice set. It's very clean. All of the gauge blocks still have oil on them that none of them appear to be messed up. It starts with uh, 101 thousandths, I'm sorry, 101 tenth, and it goes all the way up to this four inch right here. So a very nice set. The one thing that I am not sure about, again, I'm not too familiar with gauge block sets, is what this is exactly used for. My first thought was that this is some kind of eyelope or a magnifying glass, but it does not magnify. So I don't really know. I'm sure some of you guys know what that is. If you can let me know, it definitely came with the set. So there it is. TJ found that and he called me. He goes, man, they want $25 cash for it. So I said, grab it and I'll get it from you. So TJ hooked me up and we got another, another nice gauge block set there for the shop. Making a little bit of progress over here on the wall today, getting the grinder uh, racks hung up here from ZT Fabrication. So I got this one drilled and just put some anchors in there now and gonna get the other one and put it right here. It's been a little tricky, you know, I'm working in this area right here and I got a lot of stuff going on. I've got belt sanders, grinders, I got pedestal grinders, I got another one I'm gonna put over here. I've got C clamps that I want to try to hang up on the wall. Got all kind of stuff going on. So I'm just trying to maximize my real estate on this wall the best I can. I would actually like these to go up a little bit higher up here. Okay, so that it kind of clears the tools down here. But the problem is I'd like to hang my big C clamps up here and I don't want them hanging down in front of this. So I think I got these mounted kind of in the right spot where I need them so that I can at least hang my big like 10 inch, 12 inch C clamps up here and it not really be in the way. And I believe I've got room to put another rack across here underneath it. We'll see after I hang the grinders anyway. So uh, maybe hang my smaller C clamps over here. So we'll just kind of play it as, as play with it as we go and see what we come up with. I'm just using these got these blue screws for concrete or block or masonry any anything like that uh, quick tap is the brand drill it with a 3 16 masonry bit and then screw it in there so I know everybody wanted to see me paint some red behind here I was actually planning on doing that I could have bet money that I had red spray paint in my shed out there and I looked and looked and couldn't find it and I really do not feel like going to the store buying paint coming over here and painting I just want to get these things mounted up today so hopefully you understand that <laughs> all right so that one's mounted boys in blue right there boy they hauling ass too so in hindsight I think I would have 
rather to have these powder coated to make them a little more durable because test fitting of two of the grinders have already put scratches on it. So it's just, you know, me and, me and paint have a love-hate relationship. It seems like everything I paint always ends up getting screwed up. So painting is just not my thing. Although I love pretty paint jobs, it's one of those things for me, it's a job for somebody else. <laughs> so here's the DeWalt. Fits it perfectly. And we'll take the, you can take the cords here and just kind of loop them up. Hang them on the little hooks like that. We got tabs up here we can hang grinding wheels on. And there's slots cut in it. You can see down here, the wrenches that come with these grinders actually fit in there. So Paul did a good job trying to maximize usage of this metal right here to, to, to hold all of your tools and everything that you need for a grinder. So already looking good. So we'll go ahead and get this one mounted up here and I'll bring it back. All right. Those should be up. That one's got six screws. This one's got four. Just need to get a little cleaning. All right, there they are loaded up with all the grinders anyway. They all fit pretty good. Great job, Paul. The cords. The cords are being a little stubborn just because I've, I've always wrapped them around the grinder so they're they're kind of like tightened up in a different area so they're trying to unwind but take a little little loosen it up that should be fine yeah so we got the two wildcats here which is nine inch or seven inch we got the six inch batabo in the center so this uh, this rack right here is specially designed for two of this setup right here two nine inch and one six inch and then this one right here are all four and a half inch angle grinders so any of them will fit you got two of them without the guards and then we have two with the guards on it yeah so looking good looking good we got the, we got four tabs up top i'm getting ready to, to uh, hang some of my grinding wheels up there my cutoff wheels grinding wheels and that kind of stuff so let me get some of those out we'll show you how we're going to finish it out all right i think we got it finished up and I like it. It's looking good over here. Much better than what I had going on. So you can see up top we've got the little tabs for the grinding wheel. So uh, no real particular order. Just kind of putting some closer to the grinders there. But all the ones that I would use on the normal basis. Cutoff wheel, grinding wheel, polishing, sanding, a wire wheel. We got our 6 inch Metabos uh, slicers right here for the Metabo. You know. So all the extras, I've got plenty more grinding wheels. I just got them in a box over there underneath the, uh, the shelf. So my thoughts is that I love it. I think it looks great. It's a great way to organize the shop. And Paul does a good job on the fabrication part of those grinder racks right there. They look good and I'd highly recommend them. So I know he wanted to uh, put these out available to anybody. So. I'll have his website on the in the video description down below. Uh, check that out. You can click on the link and hopefully get with him very soon if you're interested in these grinding racks and he'll be glad to make you some for your shop as well. So again, Paul, everybody over at CT Fab, appreciate it very much, man. This is looking really good in here. So I got one more addition that I'm gonna do right on this wall right now. We just finished the grinding rack. This is a little Z-bar that my brother had made for me at his place. And this was what I was originally going to start using to hang the grinders up. Uh, idea that I got from Tom in, in his book. You can make up something like this and kind of come in here and make little notches for the grinders to sit in. So since I've already got that for the grinders, I'm going to use this for some C-clamps. I just went over there and punched some holes in it by hand. And what I'm going to do is mount this up on the wall somewhere right here. And this will be great for hanging my smaller C-clamps on. Like uh, some 6 inch and somewhere in the range. All the little ones. So there's one right there. You know, we can just hang them all on that thing right there. And that'll, that'll get them up off out of that box. And from underneath the table and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and get that mounted up and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, we got her using the little precision level there. We got it square. Just 
Shop organization looking much better than it was. So we got the Z-bar mounted on the wall and I got all the C-clamps over here. And it's funny, man, I've never, I've never counted how many C-clamps I have until today. And this isn't including everything. This isn't including my can't twist clamps or my big C-clamps. I've got some 12 inch and bigger. But on this rack right here, I've got 63 C-clamps. And some of those were flea market C-clamps that I've got and I've acquired them from some viewers, but a lot of them were the original to our shop. A lot of these little, little Armstrong clamps right here, channel locks. So, man, that works so much better. Now, instead of having to pull a box out from underneath the, the bench over there, now I can just come up here and, and just snag what I want, you know? Pretty cool. I'm happy with it. I got some more I got some more organization that I need to do. I definitely want to work on getting the bigger clamps and the can't twist hanging up over here also, but I'll have to build something for that. So another project for another day. If someone would just figure out a way to organize hammers. There's a big rod eye that I'm threading and it is 48 by 2.0 is a metric thread pritz and I made this this is a plug gauge that I made for it using my uh, three wired three wire method to get it on the correct pitch there and this is within a thousandth of what it should be so I feel like I got a nice shop gauge here to use to check my threads on this rod eye so we're going to go ahead and get started on it. We already got everything set up. And I got a dial indicator on my cross slide and also on the, the ways down here for my stop. I am disengaging the half nut, even though this is metric thread. So I disengage it and reverse it, and then I'll watch for the letter to line up on the, the line here. Reverse it, and engage the half nut again, and back it right on out. Come on out and just stop it. Reset your cross, your cross slide back to zero. Go at it again. Zero, zero. 
on the threading dial this one is lettered a b c d i've got a yellow dot on one of the letters the letter a this is our zero and i always make sure that i line up on this dot whenever i'm doing metric same thing when i disengage it'll come around and then i'll reverse it it'll come back this way and we'll engage it again Staying on that same exact line without it revolving either way, you're still going to be in the pitch. I've been sneaking up on it, taking light cuts and, and kind of checking this gauge in between passes and I finally got it to where I'm comfortable with it. And for me this is an easy way to check a thread and make sure it's going to fit using a, you know this type of gauge, kind of like a go no-go gauge. And it's not loose. You can, I could just barely wiggle it. So I know that this will screw onto the rod. I actually machined the rod myself that this is going on to, but I wanted to make it a, you know, a standard uh, size. So there we go. I wanted to point out how I got this held in the four jaw chuck here. I'm sure everybody's wondering how, how I've got it. So we've got two of your jaws clamped directly on the flats of the of the plate here, okay? And then these pieces right here are some wedges, or actually some corners that I had cut off of another another piece of bar stock. You know, and I always save these kind of things for, for situations just like this. And it worked out real good. I just had to mill a little bit off one side, and what they are, they're actually sitting down inside the channel right here, this part of the jaw. They're sitting in there and I stuck them in there and then run the jaw down to where they were square against the, the, the face of the jaw. And then once they were, I brought my welding leads over here and I just you know, ran some little stringer beads on there to hold them in. And it's got it. I went ahead and you know I had to bump it around just a little bit, get it indicated, indicated the face because I had milled that. I milled the face over in the milling machine and then put a center in there. So when I stuck this in there, I used the center to kind of hold it center. And then I bumped the face around to get it nice and true and made sure that it was nice and square. So that's one way to hold this kind of funky stuff in the four jaw here. And it looks a little bit scary, a little bit unsafe, but you get enough clamping pressure on this right here and you go easy on your cuts, don't overdo it, this will hold done it many times. I haven't had one fly out of the machine yet. 